How's it going you awesome bunch of bakers? Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll show you how to make tortillas with five different flours. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. I looked into my flour cupboard and realized there are more different types of flour in there than ever before. Some of them are very difficult to bake with and not all of them are very versatile. But the general rule in bread making is the flatter the bread the easier it is to make no matter which flour you use. And the tortilla is one of the flattest breads ever created. So I decided to use all my flours and try to make tortillas with them and they turn out pretty well. From right to left we have rye flour tortillas, spelt tortillas, einkorn tortillas, whole wheat tortillas and buckwheat tortillas, all made with whole grain flours. The only real difference between all the recipes is the hydration. Some of them contain slightly more water and some others contain less. The method of making the dough, the handling and the rolling out and the cooking is all the same. And you can definitely use the same method and try making tortillas with other flours or at least use these recipes as rough guidelines. Up until now I had only made tortillas with white wheat flour and you can find a video on those in the flatbreads playlist. The white flour tortillas are made exactly the same way as the tortillas in this video. So after watching this video you can head over to your kitchen, collect all the different types of flour you have and make some tortillas for yourself. But before that let me show you how it's done. There's a couple of pieces of equipment that we'll need, a bowl for mixing our dough in, scales, a dough scraper, a fork, a rolling pin for rolling out tortillas nice and flat. If you don't have one of these, you could probably use a wine bottle or something. And of course, we'll need a pan to cook them in. I'm going to use my large non-stick frying pan. It measures at around 24 centimeters or 10 inches across. If you don't have a large pan, divide the dough into more pieces and make smaller tortillas. And here's a quick look at the flours that we're going to use today. They will be in the same order throughout the video starting with the rye flour. This is the whole grain rye, also known as dark rye, that I've been using for most of my rye bread project lately. Next up we have whole grain spelt flour. Spelt is just another type of wheat. The gluten it produces is very weak, so it's not as versatile as regular wheat flour, but it does exceed in the flavor department. Bread made with wholemeal spelt flour has a nice nutty flavor. Next up we have whole grain einkorn flour. So far I have only used this in three other recipes. Einkorn is the original type of wheat, a true ancient grain. It is the grandfather of the wheat grains that we use today. It has the weakest gluten of all wheat flours, so it's very difficult to work with. But it does taste great and it's nutritious. And that goes for any flour in this video. We're using only whole grain flour, so we are getting all the goodness from the grain. And the next flour we're going to use is regular old whole wheat flour. As I mentioned earlier, I have made white wheat tortillas already, so it was time to try the whole wheat version. Last but not least, it's buckwheat. Unlike all the others, buckwheat is not a cereal grain. It is a seed that is related to rhubarb and sorrel, and it could be the healthiest one of all. And unlike all the others, it is actually gluten free. And this is what it looks like. I grew up eating this grain. It is very common where I'm from, and it is by far my favorite whole grain to eat. If you've never tried it, definitely check it out. Okay, besides flour, we'll also need some water, some type of fat, and some salt. I'm using butter today, only because I had plenty of butter in the fridge to use up. But you can use any fat that you like in your tortillas. And with all that out of the way, let's begin the process, starting with the right tortilla. We'll do this one slightly more slowly, so you see what's going on. And then we'll speed through the other ones, because they're all made in the same way. Combine the salt, melted butter, and boiling water. Give it a quick mix to dissolve the salt, then add the flour and mix it to a dough. Mix until there's no dry flour left, then cover it up and leave it in the fridge to cool down. We're using boiling water to scald the flour. It will gelatinize the starch of the flour and it will make the tortillas more soft and flexible. And we're using melted butter so that the boiling water doesn't cool down too much. And if you're going to use oil instead of butter, then you don't need to worry about it. Just use it as it is. I'm using a fork to mix the dough because that is the best tool for this job. Each of the recipes will only make three tortillas. I can't eat that many, so I'm working with small batches. If you want to make more, simply multiply all the ingredients. If you've never used boiling water for bread making, I would highly suggest watching my video on it in the Principles of Baking playlist. Scalding is one of the best techniques you could use, and it works for most other breads, not just tortillas. It will make your bread softer, it will make it stay softer for longer. Okay, after mixing the dough, leave it to chill for one hour, and after it's cooled down a bit, you can weigh it and divide it into three equal pieces. The reason for cooling it down is to make it easier to handle. A cold dough is a lot less sticky than a warm dough. Time also makes it less sticky as we give the flour a chance to absorb all the water. 
The rye dough is still pretty sticky, so use plenty of flour. After shaping the dough balls, leave them in the fridge to cool down and set even further. Next up we have spelt, which is not as sticky as rye. You can actually use the traditional shaping method here, by flattening the piece of dough, folding the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until reach point where it started. It behaves similarly to regular wheat, but it is slightly stickier than wheat. The iron corn dough will be quite soft and sticky, so you should use plenty of flour. But you can still shape it the same way as the previous spelt dough. Next up we have whole wheat. This one is probably the easiest to work with. It is not very sticky and you can use the regular shaping method. And finally, let's do the buckwheat. Because there's no gluten, there's not much structure in this dough. It feels quite crumbly and loose. It's almost like a weird kind of silly putty. There's no point folding it up like the previous tree. So shape it the same way as the right dough. Just press it with your hands until it's more or less round. Leave the dough balls to chill down in the fridge for around an hour. And that is for the same reasons as before. It'll just make your life easier. And now it's time to roll them out. Use plenty of flour, flatten the dough using your hands first, and then roll it out nice and thin. It should fit the shape of the pan. Turn the dough every time you roll it, that way it will stretch out more evenly. If you are not making too many tortillas, you can stack them on top of each other on a the plate. They will not stick together. And right after rolling, we can cook them. Get your tortilla in a preheated pan on high heat and cook it for 2 minutes. You want to flip it every 30 seconds to ensure that they cook evenly. Don't expect too much color, just cook them for 2 minutes and it will be enough. As soon as they come out of the pan, cover them with cling film so they don't dry out. Leave them on the side and move on to the next ones. The spelt tortillas will be easier to work with and they will look neater once you're done. They will have more rounded edges and when it comes to the chilling times I mentioned earlier, the spelt flour dough and the whole wheat dough don't need to be chilled for so long. You can probably get away with half the time and they should still be pretty easy to work with. But when it comes to cooking, it's all the same across the board. Drop them in a hot pan, cook for 2 minutes, flipping every 30 seconds. If they start bubbling up a lot, press them down using a spatula. Because as they blow up, they lift off of the pan. And the only part that will be cooking effectively is the bottom of that bubble. So pressing the tortilla flat ensures that it cooks evenly. Okay, next up, iron corn. And this is one of the more difficult ones to work with. The dough is very loose and it stretches very easily. And you could think that it's a good thing, but it's not, because it can easily stretch too far. And every time you lift it up and handle it, it stretches even more. So I would suggest you rolling them slightly smaller, or increase the amount of dough by about 20%, and just make slightly thicker tortillas. Don't expect these ones to come out very round. I gave it my best shot, but they did not conform. But the struggle doesn't end there, because cooking them is also a little bit more difficult. They will still take 2 minutes, but you have to be extra careful when you flip them. Especially on the first flip, the edge of the tortilla will be very fragile. So slide the spatula underneath it slowly and carefully, and flip it quickly. Once you've done a few of these, you'll get the hang of it. Here's a tip for stacking your tortillas. If you're going to make a relatively large amount, let's say 6, 9 or 12, you should flip the stack over after you finish cooking them all, so that the first tortilla that you cooked is on the top of the stack. And that's because the tortillas sweat, and the bottom one that's resting against the plate can get quite wet and soggy. Flipping it over after a while will prevent that from happening. When it comes to storing them for later, I can't tell you how long they will last. I just cook them and eat them pretty much right away. But it is the more glutinous flour containing tortillas that will stay softer for longer. So from the ones that we made today, it will be the whole wheat and the spelt ones. And the rice should also hold up pretty well. The iron corn will dry out pretty quickly. And when it comes to the buckwheat, it will come out the pan pretty stiff already, so it should be eaten right away. Rolling these things out was quite a bit more difficult. The dough has very little structure, so roll it gradually and gently, and don't even think that you're gonna get a round tortilla here. And the edges will definitely not be smooth. I guess if you want a nice and neat buckwheat tortilla, you could roll it out nice and big, and then use a plate as a stencil to trim off the edges. But then you might just mess them up as you handle them. I only moved it from the table to the plate and to the pan. I managed to rip the surface in several places. It is quite fragile. Saying that, it is easier to flip over than the Einkorn tortilla. And I must say, even with all the flaws, it turned out pretty beautiful. But there you have it. That's how you make tortillas with 5 different types of flour. After all, they were all pretty manageable. Some of them turned out better than others. But they're all worth trying out in my book. And here they are, from left to right in the same order as we made them. First the right tortilla. I was surprised at how well it turned out. Yes, it didn't have the nice round edges, it turned out a little bit rough, but it had a great texture and a great flavor. So it's definitely worth making that one again. Next, spelt flour. And this one just resembles a regular tortilla. 
nice and round, nice and flexible, slightly chewy and very tasty. Spelt has a very unique, subtle flavor. If you've never tried it, you definitely should. This one is also worth making again. Next up, Einkorn. It was difficult to work with and it was difficult to cook. I think I rolled it out too thin. It seems a little bit drier and not as flexible as the other ones. Increasing the recipe by about 20% should fix that. Still, it tastes great. I love a little bit of einkorn and I'm looking forward to trying more recipes using this flour. Next up, we have the whole wheat tortilla and it's very similar to the spelt one, but instead of tasting like spelt, it tastes like whole wheat. Someone recently asked me what's the difference between whole wheat, whole grain and whole meal. When it comes to wheat flour specifically, it's all the same thing. But whole grain and whole meal can refer to other flours, and they also mean the same thing. Okay, last but not least, the buckwheat tortilla. It was a very strange dough, difficult to work with, and it makes the stiffest tortilla of all. But all of that is forgiven and forgotten, because this thing tastes absolutely amazing. It has the strongest and most unique flavor of all. And if you love buckwheat like I do, you'll definitely love these tortillas. I'm not sure if I'll be making them again, but it was well worth the try, just to find out. So what do you think of these recipes and how many different flowers have you used for tortillas? Let me know down in the comments. You want to see more videos like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.